So tonight's subject is movement. And I thought of this subject because it's one of the things that we do every single day. And it's something that I've been inspired to do th my entire life. And as I struggle with chronic pain, with chest pain many moons ago, and also with knee pain, it's something that I had to deal with to battle through and at the end of the day be successful. But it, the, the principle tonight is really to touch base on the situation where maybe you are struggling with chronic pain and you're not doing too much. You know, you're not going for your walks, you're not in the swimming pool, you're not going for a little jog or a run or whatever you may choose to do, whether individually or with others. So the, the first take home message I wanna leave you with is start low and go slow. You know, it's really tough when you've got chronic pain to just get up and do what you want. And in fact, you can't. And the reality is because of tightness, because of fascial constriction, muscle tightness in the body, often our joints are tight and sore. And for a, a variety of reasons, we just can't do what we'd like to do. But I was inspired by a sheriff down in Oregon this year when he shared in a conference I was at. And he just started moving around his house. He was told by his physician, look, you gotta embrace the fear, you gotta move. So he said, okay. So he started moving, just around his, his room and, and his house at home. And then he, you know, ventured out after a little while and walked for a few minutes and then it was 10 minutes and then he increased it. And over time, over several months, this gentleman ended up walking for an hour. And that was when he believed he couldn't because he was believing he's damaging his tissues, you know. He can't possibly go for a walk because at that point he couldn't. But if we just start slow, and build it up. And over time, what will happen is that we will be able to do what we're meant to do as bipedal beings on this planet with two feet, is to get up and move. And I think at the end of the day, uh, walking is the simplest, cheapest, most effective aerobic type exercise we can all do. And I strongly encourage you, if you're not walking, start where you are and build it up. The second story I want to share with you tonight is a friend of mine called Roy Campbell. Roy, back in the day, back about 30 years ago, he was a professional rugby player in England. And unfortunately, he broke his neck, a horrific tackle. And it was broken in three places. And he was told by his doctor, look, he'll never walk again. He had numbness in his left side of the body for a long time, like many months, and he couldn't walk for a long time. But you know, and he was told, you can't walk. You can't run. And he believed it. You know, he believed that I'll never run again. And this was a top level athlete. He loved to exercise, loved running, loved going to the gym. And for 10 years, he didn't do anything regarding his fitness. He just was, you know, busy with life, working, raising a family. And it was until his four year old daughter says, come on dad, let's go for a run. And he says, I can't run, I can't run. Because the doctors have said so. And eventually his little four year old daughter took him by the hand and ran up to the end of the street. Just about 50 blocks, sorry, 50 yards or so. And uh, the next day, his little daughter brought him up to the next block up the street, just a little bit more. And what happened then was um, he got encouraged. And within about six months, he was running a half marathon, which really encouraged him to maybe do more. And then before he knew it, he was running marathons. He was running and participating in Ironman competitions and also in world-class events where he toured the world and he would do amazing races like run across the Amazon. And he did it twice in two different weeks over the years. And also the greatest or the most toughest race in the world is across the Sahara Desert. And he did that as well. So he's now a world-class athlete at the age of 59, still exercising every single day. And look where he started. He started on a hospital bed where he couldn't move for a number of weeks with a contraption around his head to prevent any movement of the bones. And he went on to become a world-class athlete. Now, that may help not happen to you or me, but we can be motivated. We can be inspired by Roy. But yeah, we can do whatever we want to do as long as we start low and go slow. So I encourage you to do that. You know, people often ask me, like, what kind of exercises are best? And I think... Uh, a balanced approach to exercise is optimal. So you've got the aerobic type, that's your walking, maybe jogging, maybe cycling. 
You got resistance type work, like maybe floor work, push-ups or calisthenics. Maybe go to the gym, do a little bit of um, weights under guidance. Or just having some bands, rubber bands that you're just you know, exercising your joints. So that's resistance type work, it's really important. And the third type is really important is stretching. You know, basic stretches, you can go to yoga, maybe some simple yoga classes or more advanced yoga classes. Hot yoga is very good if you're into that. So these are different types of stretch type activities that you can join clubs or you can take an interest, read a book, watch a video, look on YouTube and just get into these subtle type of exercises. And I enjoy doing these things every single day or most days of the week, about five days. That's the, the walking or running, the resistance type work with a small amount of weights at home and also some stretches and I do Pilates, clinical Pilates every day as well. So that's what I get up to to combat my pain. But um, you know, at the end of the day, movement is what we do as humans. And if we're not moving, as one person said, we're dead. We're always moving. So let's get moving with these two feet of ours or whatever sports you may be interested in, maybe racket sports, maybe team sports, but get out there and let's move our bodies, start where we are, and set low goals. You know, it's pointless saying, right, I'm gonna walk for half an hour if you haven't walked for five minutes outside. Just start with one minute. If you know you can do a minute, start low with your goals. And if you achieve it, it's a bonus. And every day you set goals and you can achieve them, you'll start to feel good. And that's something I came across in a great book as well. Set the goals low. Be an underachiever, as it were, when you set your goals. Because you guess what? You'll achieve them and then you'll feel good. Give yourself a pat on the back and then you can move on. So there's a few golden tips that I've come across over the years. I've shared with many patients and hopefully you can find the benefit too. So thanks so much. I really appreciate listening tonight. And, you know, leave some comments. What kind of things do you want me to talk about? I'm setting up a curriculum online. And this is the first one of the 20, and it's gonna be called Move, Move, Move. And it's the essence of engaging with our bodies and literally moving on in life with exercise and movement. So I hope you liked it, leave a comment, and I look forward to next week for the next live stream here on Facebook and also hopefully Instagram. Okay, thanks for now.